Hello everybody and welcome back to The Second Shelf and to another Recent Reads on Sunday. I haven't done one of those in quite a while. Somehow the Sundays after mid-August, I think I did the last Recent Reads on Sunday, the Sunday videos, you know, were occupied with other stuff, the Booker Prize and such. But anyway, <laughs> all the prize season is over now, so we can go back to the regular schedule and the recent reads on Sunday. And for those of you who might be new, recent reads on Sunday means that I discuss a couple of the books that I read recently, obviously. And the first book I want to talk to you about is Iris Murdoch, A Severed Head, first published in 1961. Um, Iris Murdoch probably doesn't need much of an introduction. She was an Irish uh, writer, novelist and philosopher. Uh, she died 20 years ago, 1999. Um, she wrote more than 20 books, I think around 26 uh, novels. Um, and if you're following my channel, you know that I came to her not through her novels, but through her philosophy. Um, I really appreciate um, her, her thinking. And I, yeah, she's one of those writers um, I, I really um, like, even though I do not love every single one of her books. Uh, the Severed, A Severed Head was her fifth novel. And I read this one uh, together with Adam from Memento Mori and Kathleen from Kathleen Ann, both booktubers by name, even though they haven't uploaded in a while. And I think that's a shame. <laughs> but anyway, um, A Severed Head, I, I really, really enjoyed this book, I have to say, um, to give you the, the, the good news up front. Um, it's a, a quite a slim book, um, around 200 pages, and it, it tackles um, a, a theme that you find in, in a lot of uh, Murdoch's novels, and that is it's a satirized account of a certain um, high middle class English uh, society, people of that class, and especially a certain type of man in that class. So our main protagonist is Martin. Um, he is a middle-aged, uh, quite well-to-do uh, wine merchant, but uh, also, you know, he writes history books. So he is this kind of educated, uh, well-educated, uh, well-to-do man and he is married to Antonia, has been married to her for more than 10 years, uh, but he also has an affair with a young uh, woman, uh, Georgie, who is 26, a graduate student. Um, and the book opens when we, we are introduced to Martin and most of the book is told from his point of view. Um, and he, f he feels quite smug about himself, you know, having this beautiful wife and having this young mistress. And then it all goes to shit. <sighs> because it turns out Antonia is going to leave him. Um, she had an affair with her psychiatrist. And then um, Georgie is also leaving him. And then he meets another woman, Anna, um, who is quite weird, quite strange. Um, <laughs> and there is, uh, you know, it's like a, it's like a dance, uh, where you switch partners when the music stops. Uh, so people, uh, switch partners and Martin is faced with, you know, not only the end of his marriage, but also the end of his affair. And then, um, uh, maybe the marriage can be saved and it's, it's completely over the top in in some um, uh, in some respects, um, you know. But the the Murdoch's um, I think Murdoch's genius uh, is that she introduces the characters in this quite slim book. It takes her 40, 50 pages to introduce these completely pathetic characters each of them flawed to the core. And then when events take place that are completely unbelievable, normally I would say, you just go, yeah, well, that fits the character. So I definitely enjoyed the, the satirical uh, approach to it. It was funny uh, as well. 
uh, it had deeper layers of, you know, metaphors that you could explore if you want to. Uh, some incident, for instance, a violent incident between Martin and Honor takes place in the basement of a house. So you can say, OK, that, that's these, you know, repressed feelings of violence. But you can also just read the book uh, as a very good story. And when we talked um, um, in the Buddy Read group about it, that was one of the things that we all, all three of us really liked, that it's just a really good story. And you can, you know, layer, you can get de go deeper if you want to and think about it and about the, 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 the images and metaphors and the philo philosophical questions about uh, violence and incest, because there's incest also. Um, but you don't, first of all, you don't have to, but it's not, um, even though there are many topics discussed, first and foremost, it's a really good story. So I, I highly enjoyed it. If you have never read uh, Iris Murdoch, this one is certainly a good uh, place to start. Um, and I, yeah, I can, I can highly recommend it. And we had such fun in the buddy read. Next up is a nonfiction book memoirish uh, book that um, I would call one of those chance encounters. Uh, when I was looking for a, for a new book to read, I, you know, I scrawled uh, through script and I wanted to read nonfiction. And then I came across this one, uh, Nikki Meredith book, uh, The Men's and Women and Me, published last year. Um, Nikki Meredith is an American journalist um, and you are, of course, familiar with the Manson murders in 1969, uh, the Sharon Tate um, in, in, in the Sharon Tate house and then in the La Bianca house uh, a night later. And Manson and his group uh, were arrested and uh, convicted uh, of murder. Uh, Nikki Meredith uh, started to visit two of the, the women um, that were involved in, in the murders 20 years after the fact, so um, in the beginning of the 90s. And she visited both women uh, for 20 years. Uh, so she st stopped just, you know, uh, 20 to 2016 or something uh, when, she, when the book uh, was about to be published. Um, and she tries, um, what Nikki Meredith tries to do is um, to get, to come to grips with the question, the big question, of course, how do regular, well-educated, well-to-do women um, become murderers in, 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 in a situation, not in, in you know, in, um, the heat of the moment or anything, but a planned, vicious, violent murder. Um, I, if you're interested in that topic, I have to say, of course, uh, in the end, Meredith can, cannot really uh, answer the question. Uh, but still, the journey of these visits combined with Meredith's own history, uh, her uh, that's why I said in the beginning it's a sort of a memoirish nonfiction uh, because she explores her encounter with violence as well. Uh, her brother um, uh, went to prison for a, a burglary. Nobody was killed, so he, you know, he didn't have to spend the rest of his life in prison, and he became uh, a professor at a prestigious university afterwards. But the, the com I really like this combination of exploring uh, a difficult question um, with and, and combining that with questions of your own life and how you look at it. Uh, when you look at Goodreads, some of the readers said that the book lacks focus. Um, I can see what these readers mean because it's a meandering book, even though the timeline is sort of, you know, from the 1990s until uh, today, but it also goes back and forth in in Meredith's own life, but also in, in the visits. Um, but I think uh, the meandering structure uh, served a purpose because, like I said, this question, how can, quote unquote, normal 
people uh, become murderers is something that you go back and forth and then you take a, a left turn and then you think maybe this one and the right turn. So I, I thought the book was really interesting um, and certainly the, the question uh, interested me and the way that Nikki Meredith tackled the question I thought was really successful. Next up is a book by one of my favorite writers, Janet Winterson, and her novel The Stone Gods, published in 2007. And I buddy read this with Nashwa, Albert Nashwa S., um, who is really such a fantastic, funny, witty booktuber. So if you are not familiar with her, please, I will leave a link to her channel down below and go check her out and subscribe. Um, the Stone Gods, I mean, Janet Winterson, uh, I don't think needs much of an introduction. Uh, contemporary writer, um, her la latest book, Frankenstein, was on the Booker long list and, in my point of view, was the best book on the list. Didn't make it to the short list. Oh well, I'm not going to talk about the Booker anymore until next year. Anyway, The Stone Gods is um, a dystopian fiction kind of book uh, in four parts. Most of it is set in the future, except uh, for the second part that is set in the 18th century. And in each part, we encounter the same two protagonists, uh, Billy and Spike. In the futuristic parts, uh, Spike is a robo-sapiens, so a, a conscious robot. Um, and of course, in the 18th century, uh, Spike has a different role because there were no robo-sapiens in the 18th century. Um, the, 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 the theme of the book is, you know, how things repeat themselves, how we always end up uh, making a mess of our planet, whether it's an island like the Easter Island um, as a colonizer or people who live there. Um, we go to war for no good reason. But it's also a love story between Billy and, and Spike in, in, the, in the different timelines. Um, it's not a, a straightforward told book, uh, so if you are not into that kind of thing, I wouldn't recommend you start Janet Winterson if you haven't read her with this particular book. Um, and if you are looking for a straightforward science fiction dystopian novel, this is probably not uh, one for you either. It's, um, it's more a novel of ideas within a story. Uh, like I said, this idea that uh, history repeats itself, uh, it uh, tackles themes like um, technology, but also uh, the, the culture and the difference between certain cultures and why uh, people then go to war and what does it mean, the extinction of species, stuff like that. But it's all in a really engaging story, at least it was for me. Um, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed discussing the book uh, with Nashua. Uh, so if you um, like contemporary fiction that is uh, a little bit experimental, um, but still has a, a, a good story at its core, and on top of that explores important themes of our life today, then I think The Stone Gods uh, would appeal to you. And the last book I want to talk to you about is nonfiction again, and that is Gretchen Carlson's book, Be Fierce, published in 2017. The book is about sexual harassment and how to deal with it. Uh, 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 Gretchen Carlson interviewed uh, or spoke to, I should rather say, more than 100 women who experienced uh, sexual harassment, harassment in the work. Place. So that, that's the topic, sexual harassment, not on the street, but in the work uh, place. Um, and I guess, I'm not sure, but you're probably familiar with her name. Uh, she was uh, an anchor woman at Fox News um, and she was uh, fired or her contract was terminated in 2016. And she filed, subsequently filed a lawsuit against the CEO of Fox News, Roger Ailes. And that sort of got the ball rolling um, of a sexual harassment allegation against Roger Ailes that had been going on for decades. Um, uh, Roger Ailes died, uh, I think, a year ago, so there is no, there were no criminal charges uh, 
uh, brought against him. But there is obviously there were uh, there was a, a, a huge wall of silence, like you had with Harvey Weinstein, um, sexual predators being able to conduct. Uh, the way they the, 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 they uh, the do for decades because uh, women just don't come forward and until one woman does and then you know everybody else uh, comes forward as well. Um, the book was interesting um, because of um, first of all because uh, Gretchen Carlson um, is not um, in the same political vicinity as I am. I mean, she's a conservative uh, woman. Worked, she worked for a very conservative network, to say the least. Um, and that was one of the reasons that I wanted to read this book. Um, and it turned out that her account of sexual harassment is just the same, you know, so it doesn't matter which political spectrum you are at. That's what I'm saying, I think. At least that's what I'm trying to say. But anyway, that, that was one of the reasons that I picked up the book. Um, the various voices of the women that uh, she, um, she tells us about is interesting, and also her point of view um, uh, of companies. So she discusses at length the role of uh, the HR department, the human resources department in companies, because that is the place if you encounter sexual harassment, you go to, you make your complaint with HR. Um, and I thought it was really interesting um, to read and important to read uh, that HR doesn't is is not really the best place uh, to file your complaint because of course um, the the role of HR first and foremost is the well-being quote unquote of the company. So these aspects were really interesting. Uh, for my taste, there was a bit too much of superficial self-help. You know how to be fierce and how to react, um, but. It, it's still, I mean, it's not the best book about sexual harassment that I've ever read, and it doesn't give, you know, new insights, uh, really. Uh, but it's still, uh, if you're interested in the subject, uh, I think it's, it's a good book uh, to read um, and to complement maybe other books on the subject. Um, and the other reason I wanted to read this is because of a movie coming out in December called uh, Bombshell, in which the case of Gretchen Carlson and uh, Roger Ailes is, you know, mo movie-sized, mo mo uh, made into a movie. <laughs> I will leave a link to the teaser uh, down below, which is fabulous. And Nicole Kidman plays the role of Gretchen Carlson. And there is another big name of Fox News, that's Megan, uh, uh, Megan uh, Kelly. Uh, she's played by Charlize Theron. So I'm certainly going to watch the movie. Um, and if, like I said, I cannot wholeheartedly recommend the book as, you know, a fantastic um, a nonfiction book about sexual harassment, but it's certainly worth your while. Anyway, those were my books for this recent reads on Sunday. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I look forward to your comments down below. And I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.